All right, so our next example is going to be a familiar function. We're going to look at the sine function. Now, um, if you think back to the limits chapter, you'll remember we spent a bunch of time working out some special limits involving trig functions. We had to use the squeeze theorem. Um, there's a fair amount of work involved. And you might have wondered, like, why are we going to all this trouble? Other than, I guess, giving us something to do, giving us some challenging limits to figure out. Um, was there a reason? Well, there is. And the reason is going to come up here. Without those limits, we can't compute the derivative of the sine function. So let's see how this goes. So we know that f prime, by definition, is going to be the limit, h going to 0, f of x plus h. So let's put f in as sine. So sine of x plus h minus sine of x all over h. OK. Now we don't just need to know those limits. We also have to think all the way back maybe to our high school pre-calculus and remember a trig identity. So you might remember this one. Sine of a plus b is sine a cos b plus cos a sine b. Okay, We can apply that identity here with a equal to x, b equal to h. Let's see what we get. We get sine of x times cos of h plus cos of h times sine of, oops, sorry, cos of x times sine of h minus sine x. Whole thing over h. All right, now it looks a mess, but we can gather terms. Sine x, sine x. Let's put those together and let's see what we get. h goes to 0. So we have sine of x times. So here we have cos h minus, that's just minus 1, right? Minus 1. And denominator h, right? I'm allowed to divide term by term, right? I can put this over h, this over h, this over h. So we can, we can put the h there. Okay, then we have cos x times sine h over h. Okay, all right. Now, remember your limit properties. Limit is with respect to h. So this is a constant as far as the limit's concerned. So is this. Here are the two limits. What we have is we have this, okay? We have sine x, all right, times a limit h going to 0, cos h minus 1 over h, okay, plus cos x times the limit h going to 0, sine of h over h. So if we think back to the limits chapter, well, we know what these two limits are. We showed that this limit is equal to 0. We showed that this limit is equal to 1. So sine x times 0 plus cos x times 1, we get cos x. 
So the derivative of sine is cosine. Um, this, I think, should be, it should be a fairly satisfying result, right? This is a nice result. The derivative of one trig function gives you another trig function, right? Another familiar trig function. Um, that's a nice relationship. Uh, now, what if we started with cos? Do we get the same thing going the other way? Um, stay tuned and we'll find out in the next video.